All right, so we jump in. We'll start off, I guess. You want to start off with immune? Neutrophil absolute. Yeah. All right, so just as a, a background, so, you know, white blood cells are in phenoage, but uh, white blood cells aren't a homogeneous group, right? So they've got neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, basophils, eosinophils. So I don't pay much attention to the basophils and eosinophils because they're very, very small, you know, numbers. The almost 95% or more are the neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. So I focus on that. But then there too, there's some disparity because the neutrophils and monocytes increase during aging and lymphocytes decre decrease during aging. So if we're only focused on, and I know you're not, but there might be people out there who look at phenoage or white blood cells and they think, oh, my white blood cells are in range. They could be within range for 50 years and lymphocytes increasing, not sorry, neutrophils increasing, lymphocytes decreasing and white blood cells stay stable but the data is going in the wrong direction. That's a pro-inflammatory phenotype. So I find the most value in looking at the, you know, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. All right. So your data, your data is pretty flat. So the trend line gets you just above, what is that? Like two, you've got 2000, the Lust Garden optimal range, 2000 to 3000 for neutrophils looks like in green. Yes. Yes, I do. Cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, aiming for the lower end of the range, um, should be optimal. Uh, that's based on all-cause mortality risk. The question of how low, knowing that they increase during aging, somewhat debatable. I mean, 1,600, 17, 1,800, is that you know, really less optimal compared to 2,100? So there is an increase in all-cause mortality risk less than 2,000, but um, I'm guessing there probably is reverse causation there where people who have very low neutrophil levels may also have inflammation. So for those for those tests where you've got less than 2000 I'd look to see you know was at least hsCRP uh low right so 0.3 milligrams per liter or somewhere in that ballpark if it was like one 1 1.2 with no low, low neutrophils it would suggest to me that there may be a problem in making neutrophils um and then whatever's there would be you know increasing inflammation um well remind me to go back to uh, hsCRP after we do with this we'll take oh, a look at sure. that. Okay. it's on today's list dave it's on today's list okay okay oh good you've got a list all right i love yeah, it yeah i have it all mapped out um, <laughs> all right Perfect. so neutrophils neutrophils look good um especially because that trend line is right at the bottom of the of the reference range or not the the optimal range and then yeah lymphocytes decline during aging um and that's what we see here too right so uh so yeah that your data the trend line, I mean, granted, it's just a few data points, but if you look at, say, 2021, when you had more tests, starting with more tests, I mean, yeah. even there, you're starting from about 1,300 and then declining to around now 1,100. So that's a big one. We want to get those closer to 2,000 if we can. Um, that That's what's uh, most likely found in youth based on population-based averages, and it's associated with lowest risk of death for all causes. So Wow. Question, so I'm, I'm way below 2000 then for now. Yeah. Um, but that you have variability in that data. So for example, you know, just even last year you had close to 1600, 1500. So it's just a matter of what's the recipe where you avoid like 900, which you saw last year, you saw two years ago, 900, you know, how can you avoid the lows and have more of these highs, even if you just go from like 1300 to 1600, flatten out that curve, you know, that's, that would be the first start in trying to figure out what's, you know, what to do to, you know, resist the age related decline. Like monocytes. It's like definitely malleable, I should say too, the lymphocytes. So mine recently have declined too, but I think that's dietary change. So I'm doing a bunch of stuff and mine have been as low as 1257. I've, never had them lower over the past 10 years. So we'll see if I can reverse it to get it back to where, you know, it should be. Yeah. I'm going to be curious to see what, what levers I can push to make those move. Yeah. All right. So monocytes. Yeah. So monocytes increase during aging so that you've um, resisted that is good news. Um, and the values are pretty good too, you know, around it's like point. Look, I mean, look at how we have got two like straight lines and a kind of ping pong between. Yeah. Is it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's about. That's kind of interesting. It could be, it could be that, um, so sometimes the lab report will say like monocytes 8% and then it'll say uh, 0.3, 300, you know, cells per microliter. 
Uh, whereas if you took the total white blood cells and then multiplied it by that 8%, you get the actual number versus the rounded number. So it could be that you just wrote down, so it might be, you know, 0.3. You wrote down 0.3s instead of multiplying white blood cells by the percentage of monocytes. Hmm. I mean, I usually just I have I have it scripted where this just pulls it right off of the uh, PDF for the Yes. library. So. Yeah. So it's like either because it looks like it's either 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. So they they round it down instead of giving the actual number. Uh, but it, you can see anyway, it's in the ballpark. Right. But, you know, it, it's not it's not going to change your data from, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 range to 0.4 to 0.6 range. You know what I mean? It's it's a rounding issue in your case. So, um, yeah, increases during aging. So you're you should be good here, too. Um, and then. Platelets too. Platelets are uh, com contribute to immune defense. So let's see Platelets. that. I think these are alphabetized. So platelets, no, no, they're not alph alphabetized. Huh. All right. So maybe I rolled past platelets. That'll be the next thing I work on is alphabetizing these so that I can find them easier. Yeah. Uh, it'll just be an easy, easy sort of the, the data before I chart them. Oh, wait, lymphocyte percentage? But before we go to Oh, find sure, them. sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that too, yeah, that de definitely declines during aging. Uh, higher being potentially better. And I say potentially because as far as I know, there are no studies all cause mortality risk. All we have is the aging data. So this kind of ties in with your lymphocyte levels um, declining, right? So basically total white blood cells are stable. Lymphocytes are declining. So the percentage is declining. So um, At least within this, I'm kind of within my optimal range, mainly. yeah. But then, then, you know, so even there too, like, you know, if you think about centenarians, if, 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 you know, so if the glucose reference range is 80 to 94 and you've got a centenarian who's 93, you could say, or I don't know if that's the best example, maybe using like, I don't know, TNF alpha or something. If the re if inflammation, if the inflammatory marker is less than three and they're at 2.8, right? So how much of aging is if they had kept their, were able to keep their TNF alpha like 0.3 and avoid it getting to 2.8? Is that just the aged phenotype where now, you know, you're in range, but it's been increasing over time, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a hard one. We, you know, we've got to resist age-related change and have it in the optimal range. Agreed. There's is that neutrophils in case you wanted to see that one. Yeah, I, that one, the neutrophil percentage, I'm not so, it's it's the lymphocyte percentage I'm most interested, but platelets. Okay, uh, platelets. There we go. There we go. All right, flat is good. Nice. Um, Yeah. they decline during aging 200 to 300, close to optimal based on all cause mortality risk. Lower than that, increased risk, higher than that, increased risk. So then it raises the question where should you be 200 to 300? Should it be closer to 200? Should it be closer to 300? When considering it declines during aging, it would suggest higher may be better in that context. But in my data, when I do biomarker versus biomarker analyses, platelets versus the other big ones, um, closer to 200 may be better. In your case, though, stable. So we're, we're all good there. If they start to decline, that's another flag, you know, uh, or, or, you know, whack-a-mole. We've got to try to, try to Right. cover. I know that I clot quickly, so I rarely need bandages, especially if I do the, you know, the finger prick blood tests, it just clots right away. So I, I like, that's, uh, a, that's a nice thing about having high platelet counts, but nice. I'm like a Tarantino movie where after the finger prick, I could like squirt that, you know, squirt. <laughs> <laughs>